Hi, this is Mike Stonebreaker. Uh, I'm on the faculty at MIT. Uh, my main claim to fame is I won the Turing Award in 2014, and I'm a database type. And I'm here to tell you that if you're writing a database application, uh, you're probably doing it all wrong. So that's what this talk is about. If you're not writing a database application, you might learn something anyway. Okay. So who are you? So you are building a data-oriented application for the cloud. Uh, and unless you're on some other planet, uh, your company, your enterprise is moving aggressively to the cloud. And if, it, if it's not, uh, you should probably change companies. So you're building a data application for the cloud. And if you're wise, you're probably want to build this on a platform as a service world, PaaS. So if you're, uh, if you're adopting a uh, platform as a service, then you need to structure your application as a workflow of what I'll call steps. And you pass state between steps uh, through a call to the next in line or through permanent storage, for example, S3. So, if you do pass, uh, then you have the advantage that you will only be charged while the step is running. Uh, that's nice. You save money, but it has advantages way beyond uh, just saving money. So stay tuned. So what's a data-oriented application? Here's one of my favorite simplistic ones. Uh, Many websites uh, have a buy button. Uh, and so what's the code behind a buy button? Well, first of all, you need to, if, if the customer wants to buy three widgets, you've got to see if you've got three widgets. So you have got to reserve inventory through uh, some data database system uh, ordinarily. Uh, if you've got the inventory, then you want to check the customer's credit, make sure you want to do business with them. That's often an external service, you know, to uh, somebody who does this. Uh, if you like what you see so far, then you take the customer's money, often through something like PayPal or, or Stripe. Uh, you process the payment, and if the payment goes through, then you call a fulfillment system to fulfill the order. And after you do all those four steps, you're done. So this is four distinct steps. And in, uh, invariably, those are four database applications that we're talking about. Uh, sometimes there are two external services. Uh, for example, I said PayPal. Uh, they may include machine learning, large language models, operations. Uh, you know, you may put into this workflow, is this a fraudulent purchase? Uh, and if so, you want to bail on it. And of course, in more complicated cases, this may be a tree rather than just a line. So this is the kind of applications I'm talking about. And uh, you're writing this for the cloud. And so what's your application architecture if you've decided on one? So it may well include Linux and Kubernetes. Uh, if you want to do this uh, multi-node, uh, you might include AWS Lambda and AWS Step Functions as your serverless platform as a service. Uh, TypeScript and Python are really popular implementation languages these days. And you're invariably using one or more databases and ones that are wire, wireline compatible with Postgres would be a good idea because all the cloud vendors are betting the ranch on Postgres compatibility and that will give you flexibility downstream. So 
you're writing a data-oriented application for the cloud, you're using platform as a server, serverless uh, world, uh, and uh, you have some sort of application architecture like what I have on this slide. Okay, so I'm here to tell you that you're doing it all wrong. So take a look at DBoss, which I'll talk about more in a bit. DBoss will save you at least one order of magnitude in development time. It will be at least one order of magnitude faster than AWS Lambda. Uh, it will lower your administration costs in a way that I will talk about. And it will have better security than whatever you're doing. And by the way, it's cheap. So go check us out at dboss.dev. And the rest of this talk will explain to you why I can make these claims. Okay, so order of magnitude less development. Okay, well, the forward path, those four steps uh, will mostly be SQL, SQL transactions. And the forward path is pretty straightforward uh, to code. And it's not a whole lot of code. But here's where the problems come in. The challenge is the error branches. If you don't have the inventory, then what do you do? You got to do, you know, maybe check someplace else, maybe abort this workflow. If the user, uh, if the customer has bad credit, again, you've got to handle the error, uh, decide whether you want to do business with them or not. You process the payment, and if it fails, well, you maybe ask him for a different credit card. Uh, and then uh, you fulfill the order if everything has gone well. And if he gives you a bad address, uh, you can't fulfill it. So error handling is a really big deal, which is what happens when these operations fail. And then an even bigger challenge is suppose your application crashes, you're in mid-flight on uh, trying to uh, get, a, get a customer's order processed, and you're in the middle of it, and you've got to pick up the pieces. Uh, if disaster happens, heaven forbid uh, AWS crashes, or heaven forbid there's a ransomware attack, then again, you're in the middle of things and things are all screwed up. And then if there's a sudden spike in load, that's a really great thing to happen, but then you don't want response time to go through the roof. So the oops logic, which is if things go wrong or you know, in, in the event of overloads or dot, 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 then you need more logic to deal with this. So in my experience or in the experience of the DBoss company, the forward logic is 5%, maybe 10%. And all this oops and error code is 90 or 95%. So you want to save an order of magnitude uh, in your development time. You've got to focus on reducing the everything else to near zero. So I'm gonna tell you how we do that. So DWAS gives you a bunch of workflow guarantees for your workflow. First of all, any workflow we guarantee every step is run once and only once. You obviously don't wanna pay twice or ship twice. And this is a whole bunch of code because one large regional bank that we've been talking to estimates that 40% of their legacy code base uh, is there to implement once and only once. Second thing we give you is database sagas. This is an old concept originally proposed by Ken Salem and Hector Garcia Molina in the 80s. And here's the problem. If there's a bad address for fulfillment, you've got to unwind uh, the payment transaction, you've got to unwind the, the transaction that reserves inventory. And so you've got to unwind across multiple transaction boundaries. Now, sometimes you can just do physical backup, but often 
often that doesn't work. So if you've reserved inventory and somebody else uh, has reserved inventory after you, you can't just physically put back the bits the way they, the way they were. Uh, you've got to run a compensating transaction to decrement inventory. So we provide database sagas so you can back out across multiple transaction boundaries. And then we guarantee that your workflow finishes even if bad things happen, uh, even if there's a crash or a ransomware attack or anything else bad. So with these guarantees, you just write the operations, the forward logic, and the platform handles everything else. We handle orchestration to run the operations, your operations when inputs are available. We do careful bookkeeping on errors to support once and only once. We support sagas to support logical backout. And we provide automatic load balancing and scalability. Now, this is worth at least an order of magnitude in development time. So you don't have to take my word for it an early DBoss customer is Thomas McNally, who's the CTO at TechMates Group. And here's his quote, what took us two months to build in AWS took just two days uh, on DBoss. So this is where an order of magnitude in development time is saved. It's all on the error, the error path and the oops logic. Okay. So the next thing I said, we want, we run an order of magnitude faster than AWS. How do we do that? Well, you have, you have application steps and they make database, uh, database updates or, or queries. Now in AWS and Lambda, uh, your app, there is no effort to co-locate your your application steps with the database. Uh, well, we, we try very hard to co-locate them because it's well known that stored procedures in the database are worth an order of magnitude and performance. So we run your steps as stored procedures in the database rather than somewhere else. Now you're about to tell me that your programmers don't like stored procedures. And yes, I've heard that. So what is the DBoss secret sauce? Well, stored procedures are not popular and you ask your programmers why, and they say, well, we have to learn a separate language, something like PL SQL. Uh, there's no debugger for stored procedures. So it's really painful to try and get them to run. And then tools that you're expecting to have available like version control usually don't exist with stored procedures. So DBoss makes all these problems go away. We seamlessly compile TypeScript and Python steps into stored procedures. You don't need, you just think they're running uh, and we run them as stored procedures, uh, you know, it's totally seamlessly. You don't need to learn anything. We give you a fancy time travel debugger for, uh, for your uh, TypeScript or Python steps. Uh, there's a uh, paper in very large database conference last year that you should take a look at. Uh, and, uh, and basically, what you can do in our debugger is back up individual operations, step change things, single step them and so forth. So time travel, you just back up after something goes wrong and you try alternate paths. And then we provide version control of stored procedures automatically. So the secret sauce is stored procedures are fast and we solve the problems with stored procedures uh, and make them easy to use. Okay, so that was number two. Number three, I said, we give you simple administration. So platform as a service 
load balancing, crash recovery, all that stuff is done automatically. Uh, and DBoss does not run on Linux and Kubernetes, uh, so they're not in your stack. Uh, DBoss runs on Firecracker, so there's much less things to worry about. And one way to put this is that you only need a DBA. You don't need a DBA plus a Linux system administrator plus a Kubernetes system administrator. So administration in our world is a great deal simpler and has a lot less moving parts. Okay, one of the nice things that we do for you is we give you time travel uh, for everything. Now, I already said that we could give you time travel for your application, uh, and that's a useful thing to do for debugging purposes. But in fact, our operating environment is database based. So we do time travel on everything in the data in our database. So that means if you want to back up the entire system, uh, five minutes, go ahead and do it. And we simply go back through the log of all events and restart and start going five minutes ago. So if, if there's a successful ransomware attack that happened eight minutes ago, then simply move to nine minutes ago and single step around the disaster <clears throat> and you're now up and running. So we log everything, your application plus the operating services state and we log it to a data warehouse, uh, you know, and that's, uh, we, we allow you to use your favorite data warehouse, think Vertica, think Redshift, think Presto, whatever your favorite one is. And you can keep this log for as long as you want to, as long as you're willing to pay for the space. So that means you can recover from ransomware attacks uh, very, very easily. If there's a rogue transaction, you can simply back up, uh, get rid of it, and, and then keep going. So time travel is a really nifty feature. So in summary, uh, leveraging stored procedures gets you an order of magnitude in performance and presumably an order of magnitude in lower cost. Uh, DBMS-centric programming environment automates the error path and the OOPS logic. You have an order of magnitude less code. Linux and Kubernetes are gone, simpler administration, and careful integration, including time travel for the programming environment and the operating environment, leads to really nifty security and resilience features. So basically what I'm advocating for is if you're writing a data-oriented application, you want the database to be the center of the universe with careful integration of the programming environment and the operating system as database clients. That gets you time travel for everything, transactions for everything, disaster recovery, simplicity, and very high performance. So let the revolution begin. Go to uh, dboss.dev uh, to get started. Thank you very much, and I'm open for questions. Thank you.